And we're back. Hello, Ooh. everyone. <laughs> that went very loud suddenly, like right there. It did. Hey, you know, it's a good thing that I was not on a, any hallucinogenics because that would have been like like going from the tranquil wind chimes to <laughs> yeah. that would just toss me over the edge there. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah. I'll have to rework that a little bit to have more of a fade in and fade out than it had yeah. before because <laughs> I had different controls back in the day. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much, John and Chat, for posting out the link. We'll see how that goes. I hope more folks can join us here for what we're going to talk about today. Hello, everyone. It's Sunday night. That means it is time for the Weekly Dig. For those of you new to the stream, this is a show where we talk about anime old and new and dig deep. This is, uh, or I am, my name is Brent. These are my fabulous co-hosts, John. Konbanwa, Mina. And Steve. Hello, hello. So let's get into it and start talking um, because today we are going to talk about a little show, um, which I am furiously trying to get set up here. Um, hold on. There we go. I just need to do that and then share that thing so we can talk about that thing. Gundam, the 8th MS team. That's right. Um, so we watched the first three episodes of the 12 episode MS Gundam 8th MS Team OVA from, we started in 1995, went on for a few years there um, for a variety of reasons, which I'm sure we will get into. Um, part of the Gundam franchise, very, very clearly, very much one of those things. Um, and uh, well remembered as being one of the more grounded Gundam series, more about sort of boots on the ground soldiers. Well, still having plenty of uh, of mecha action. Now, um, let's get into this. Um, well, I have a quick question. Yeah. This is a 12-episode OVA. Mm -hmm. Did they do that a lot with, like, side arc kind of Gundam things? Because 12 episodes, to me, is, like, a, nowadays, Pretty long. full season. Yeah. In that period of time, maybe it was a half season. Mm -hmm. But... You know what I mean? It seems unusual to have a 12 episode mm -hmm. OVA. This is definitely well, on the longer side. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say War in the Pocket was six, right? War well, in the Pocket is, I, I'm not sure, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. Could be six. Uh, double 80 is, I think, uh, uh, Double 83, uh, excuse me, I think it's 10. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, yeah, so uh, typically your OVAs are six or so episodes long. I think six is kind of the, was the standard in the early 90s. Okay. Uh, Tenshi Muya, El Hazar, a lot of the AIC stuff was that. So you're right, this is definitely a longer one. Yeah, um, also, say, it would it would have gotten a season's worth of show right. for now. I mean, um, also complicated by the fact that uh, the director passed away partway mm -hmm. through the creation of A Dynasty. Oh, um, he was so that dying due to the Gundam thing, thing and literally he yeah. died yeah. doing the Gundam thing. Yeah. Um, uh. So that now that was you know fairly late in the process around episode i think nine um eight or nine so um somebody else uh, stepped in but mm -hmm. uh, i'm sure that that compl complicated things as well yeah no joke Related stuff um, uh, thank you yeah yeah absolutely um now we should mention um everyone's kind of exposure to gundam at this point uh john how much gundam have you seen uh the first nine episodes of the original gundam series <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. <laughs> and now this. <laughs> okay. Uh, for me, it's been the original, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> original universal, uh, universal century. Uh, this one, War in the Pocket, mm -hmm. um, the Wing? origin movies, Wing, yeah, Gundam mm -hmm. Wing, and I'm through most of Unicorn. I think. Nice. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, I've seen most of it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, uh, not all the more recent uh, Gundams, nothing against them. Um, we just haven't gotten to that. Um, but I, I went through a period of kind of catching up on all the Gundams uh, some years ago. Um, so fairly familiar with all of this stuff, as awesome as it is. So Gundam is definitely a, um, um, or um, HMS team, rather, um, is a really good starting point, I think, for, for Gundam. It, you don't need to know anything going on about, you know, Gundam in general. You don't need to know 
Um, everything uh, you just know that there's a war between Earth Federation and Zeon, the Zeeks, um, and that kind of uh, sets you up. And being on Earth, I think, helps a lot too uh, for most of the story. Um, although this story does not start on Earth. Uh, well, actually, kind of, it does start on Earth because um, we get to see some of the characters, but it very quickly ships to space. And it tells the story of um, Shiro Amada uh, on his way to Earth for his first um, um, his first big mission in the story. What were your all's impressions of Shiro? Um, it was it was refreshing to have a character not on the spectrum, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> you know, the first time I saw this, I was like, oh god, here we go, the young kid who's like, you know, socially whatever. And he's gonna be on this, and it's just like, oh no, he's actually, he's he's excitable, and you know, he's exuberant, mm -hmm. but he's clearly a soldier and a person who can communicate with people, right? You know, there's, and, and he's, uh, you know, he's he's um, gregarious <clears throat> with the yeah, people he, around him. He's affable. And, yeah, he's affable, and in the first episode, you immediately get the idea that he is. There is no conflict with him as to what he is doing at mm -hmm. all. You know, right. he's just like when it starts off with the action in the space, he's just like, okay, I got to do the thing. Let's do the thing. This is why I'm here. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And he just, you know, that's what he does. As opposed to like, oh, oh, people, I have to talk to people. I'd rather look at this gun to manual so I can pilot the thing. You know, it's just really nice and refreshing not to have that. Yeah, he seems very hero y. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. willing to go yeah. out in a in a ball at versus mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, you, you're gonna do nothing. You're gonna stand there because there's you know, there's things happening, but you don't have the proper equipment. It's like, no, mm -hmm. he is willing to improvise and do what he needs to do and do the hero thing. Yep. And do it yeah. intelligently. Not no offense to, to uh, prior <laughs> prior Gundam pilots, but you Hopefully, know, yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> he's got a plan, he's gonna put it into action. It might not seem to be the best plan, but it mm -hmm. is a it is a plan and he does yes. you know fully fully inhabit that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's I I liked him. I, I thought mm -hmm. his character was uh was an interesting an interesting take. I didn't realize who he was until later mm. in the episode. Yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, really? I thought he was just kind of like the casual, you know, cowboy. Like, mm -hmm. he's, you know, just doing the thing. I'm like, oh, okay, got it. now I got gotcha. you. Yep. Leads, leads by example. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Shiro is definitely one of the more refreshing Gundam main characters. Because um, he's a lot more relatable, I think, to, yeah. to your guys' point. Yeah. Um, see here um uh well let's, let's go through um because we, we don't meet too many of them um but uh we definitely do get a variety of the uh the various characters here um what were your thoughts on uh the I think he's a junior ensign uh, uh michael um the techno uh, nerd the, the techno nerd ish <laughs> kind of guy yeah uh what are your thoughts on him um, I, you, you know, he, I thought it was kind of interesting, you know, even still now having seen this probably about four or five times, mm. um, wow. that he's writing in a book Yeah, and he's writing his letters and it's really a me not a memoir, but it's his diary and he's writing it for somebody. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, here you all, here you have all this technology and stuff going mm -hmm. on around you and here's this guy with a book mm -hmm. <clears throat> just writing in there. He's very dismissive of what's going on around him and of mm. people. So you get the idea, you get the sense that he's just um, not necessarily by the book kind of person, but you know, mm. you have to, he, he's got an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's got an opinion on things and he's not mm -hmm. always correct. Let's just say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's nice to have him as you have our cowboy. Mm -hmm. who is good at what he does, but he's still a cowboy. And then you have the guy who is writing, you know, constantly in his journal, love letters to, to an unknown. Mm -hmm. And he is very much like the sort of voice of reason kind of thing. He wants mm -hmm. to also pilot a Gundam, mm -hmm. but yeah. he does the duty that he's given and he does it well. And he does it as like to the best of his ability by the book that he has to do it mm -hmm. versus cowboy. <laughs> yes, who is achieving the end by any means necessary? And what's funny is, in a lot of mecha series in general, Michael would be the protagonist. Yeah, right, because he's the 
you know, the, but the young buck. Kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but no, we're going to flip the script here. Yeah. Which I think is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely have definitely have that. Um, uh, and did they mention in this early part, where are they descending from? Side uh, two? Definitely. Uh, the, I, I'm not sure. I think it was side two. Yeah. Okay, what is that? Ah. <laughs> ah okay. See, I just so, took it for granted. I'm like, okay, is there what is it is the colony? They can't be coming from a colony. I'm like, well, they are. Could, yeah. they, could they? they are. Or they could they be well, coming this from is the, the other part well, of I don't think they're coming from the moon either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, I don't know where they're this, coming from. This is one of the one of the nice things, refreshing things about this particular series is that this mm. these are fetties from the colonies. So they're okay. conscripts from the colony well, not necessarily conscripts, but volunteers from okay. the from the colonies. Colonies that are sided with Earth. Because okay. not all the colonies are sided with mm -hmm. Zeon. And some of them, like War in the Pocket, the side, which is the big orbital tube thing. Right. That's mm -hmm. what those are. Um, they, um, some of them are neutral. The, so the one in War in the Pocket mm -hmm. is neutral. That takes place in, it hasn't taken either side um, in the conflict. Okay. So these are like all like little nations, right? And they're mm -hmm. aligning with them or not aligning with, with, with mm -hmm. them. So these guys are from okay. side two. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And this is they're they're being taken to Earth to, to fight, but they are Federation right. soldiers from. They're the transferred to Earth. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Because mm -hmm. I was I was not entirely clear. I'm like, okay, yeah, I know they're Federation. Mm -hmm. I have no idea where this transport ship is coming from, and mm -hmm. immediately it makes me think of like Macross kind of thing. Be like, okay, in the early stages of Macross, there was the Mars base. And mm. they were, you know, tr they're trying to get from Earth to Mars. So I'm thinking, mm. oh, maybe these people, maybe, they, maybe they're coming from yeah. Mars side or something uh, like that. I don't, I don't know where they're coming yeah. from. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, that's actually a, uh, an important point for, for Gundam, for those new uh, Gundam. Um, there's no faster than light in Gundam. Um, right. Everything takes place in actual time. So, you know, a Mars colony would be six months away. Um, and, and do they have? Because I remember you guys talking before about Gundam takes, takes place like moon and earth yeah mm -hmm. it yeah. is not like oh the saturn colony right, yeah <laughs> it's like no it's pretty close mm -hmm. you're talking like a lot of these sides are within like two or three days of earth yeah okay so there is yeah. is there a mars presence or not it's all they only nope. got orbital and nope. that's it okay nope. um there is a um separate series um, no there there is a um a mining facility on Saturn, I believe. Hmm. Um, uh -huh. There's a, a very remote um, thing because that's a, that's a thing in uh, Double Zeta. That somebody comes from, I think it's Saturn, one of the other planets. There's a very remote. And it's, it's one of the big ongoing mysteries: is what the heck's going on out there? Because um, uh -huh. folks show up from there, and it's weird. But that's the whole point: is that like that is that is months away, you know? Right. And people, you know, it's, it's just it's completely different. Yeah, the, the vast majority of, of stuff is. Basically within within the um, lunar orbit, okay. In terms of, of scale and, and distance, um, but yeah, they are they are going to um, to Earth, and then things happen <laughs> yes, as they, they always do. do. <laughs> right. uh, there's a battle, and being you know Earth Federation soldiers, they're like, well, you know, we should probably check out and see what's going on. Um, to your point, Shiro goes out in a, in a ball, uh, which is a very very small machine. Um, but manages to do pretty darn well against a, an early uh, Zaku. Um, Which, not knowing what how how a ball is supposed to be armed, it has mm -hmm. like two one hundred five auto cannons or something on its mm -hmm. back. Where it's like that's actually a fair amount of it seems offensive power for what looked yeah. like a little service vehicle. Absolutely, um, and that is very much kind of the point. Let's see if we can get a, a better shot of. Well, there we go. Um, so to be clear, one of the things in the Gundam universe is that. Um, balls are the classic, you know, early space development construction vehicles, right? You have a right. sphere around a human with mechanical arms that can grab things and move things and have torches and so forth and so on. Um, when the one year war broke out, because it's the first, you know, actual space war, they were like, okay, stick a gun on it. Great. We have a ton of these laying around, <laughs> stick a gun on it. And it, it, we can technically fight with these things. Oh, um, yeah. so, yeah. so as, the, as the point of the ball, it's like, yes, it is technically a piloted, you know, unit, but it, it's not really wow. well, up to par. And, and to that point, when you watch Gundam Origins, the, mm. the two part, two movies, mm. um, it, they talk, it takes place, of course, before the, the war. Yeah. And they talk about actually 
the Xeons making the first real yeah. mobile suits and how to mm -hmm. propulse them and, and those yeah. kinds of things and how what the Federation had, which were the you know the, like the the gun tank and the the I forget what they're called with the uh, gun cannon gun cannon. And um, and that was it. So you know mm -hmm. these things were like in, it wasn't just like patchwork. Here we go. Here's a couple of them. Throw mm -hmm. them out there. This was actually a thing. This is how how yeah. they had the fight at, at, at first because there wasn't mm -hmm. really any real mobile suits. Yeah, yeah. No humanoid machines. Yeah, um, yeah. And so not to get too far in the weeds because this is not anything to do with the AMS team, but it is useful background information. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the idea is that um, uh, humanoid machines are easier for the human mind to map movement onto. So if you're learning to pilot a ball, for example, you have to remember that these things can move in all sorts of crazy directions and kind of figure out the mapping for those controls. But if you control is mapped to arms and legs, it's easier for the pilot to get used to that thing. So you can train someone up much faster on right. those machines. <clears throat> and so that's the, the Zaku, which was the first mobile suit, um, and so forth and so on. So that's where they came from. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so we have our fight. Um, and, uh, uh, quite simply, um, it doesn't go too well for either side. Um, Shiro is kind of thrown, uh, is, is put in great danger as is the pilot of the other suit. Aina, who we see here in the very loud interstitial. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Her name should have been Aima. Because I'm there in love. Go. I'm in love. Aww. There we go. Aww. 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 Um, but they're basically trapped together um, in, in an old Hulk, and uh, for like what I term, basically they have to, you know, figure out a you know figure out a way past their differences to get out of there alive, both of them. Um, Which the the showing of a what looks like a pretty well together Hulk. I mean mm -hmm. it's. It's not exactly just all scrap parts. There's like still yeah. inner compartments and stuff, and dead people. People, yeah. Like, yeah. well, oh, this is wow. They went there pretty quick. With yeah. That, right? Well, I mean, that's 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 one of the things. The other refreshing thing about this is that you know you talk, you stop and think about it. There would be air. There would be compartment mm -hmm. compartmentalized. Yeah. You know, things still under pressure, and there would be bodies that that come out. You know, mm -hmm. space isn't that clean, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like you know, it's like everything's. Okay, bring in the fire and get rid of all the bodies, right? right? Yeah, you know, it's just, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. those are things. And it's Shiro's reaction to it when the first body just, whoop, just pops mm -hmm. out as he opens the door. He's like, ah, which mm -hmm. I think would be anybody's reaction, honestly. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> also, space is really big. Yes. Uh, <laughs> which is one of the things, that, that, and, and again, it's because this is a thing where folks say, well, wouldn't somebody have you know, found it and use it for scrap? It's like, it's way over there. You know, and this is right. way over there. Like, like actually finding and grabbing all of these hulks and doing all that stuff is a whole, a whole separate thing. There is actually a an element in in kind of there are like scrappers that go around and collect these things, but it's not something that you like automatically go and do because that hulk and that hulk may have been drifting away from its battlegrounds for you know months. And so well, I think like, they ah, even said it? they even mm -hmm. say in, the, in in there, wow, this thing must have been drifting for a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. With all of its armaments, torpedoes, and explosives yes. things and stuff. <laughs> Yikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so uh, basically they make it out um, with a somewhat romantic little scene, a little moment with the two of them together. I thought I was watching Cinemax after dark at one point <laughs> because the music that was playing was very reminiscent of that. So mm -hmm. Just saying. I was, uh, I was like, wait a minute. Are we going? No, this is this is Gundam, not not okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, so that would be difficult. Like that whole operation would be very difficult in spacesuits. Just say it. Yes. Yeah. Um, Docking right. procedures require a lot of preparation. <laughs> exactly. And uh, exactly. that that ain't gonna work like that. Well, you're absolutely. <laughs> I was. Uh, oh, good. Just gonna say, um, definitely some saxophone involved in this scene. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just was, you know, again, it's his affability, and obviously that, yeah. the, you know, what they're driving here is he is definitely a Federation, mm -hmm. but at the same time, he's also an affable human. Mm -hmm. And even though she is part of the enemy, you know, grouping mm -hmm. the Xenon people, that it doesn't that doesn't really matter. They're two humans in 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 an extreme situation, mm -hmm. and they come together and do the thing regardless of their uh, alliances. And it's like mm -hmm. oh, that's okay, that's cool. Which yeah. which is a throwback for me mm -hmm. to the scene in the original series, 
Mm. when the Xeon pilots are flying over the fields of, of Earth and they see the mother and the child. Right. And the yeah. one guy goes, why don't we just land here and give them, help them out a little bit? Mm -hmm. And, you know, his, his, his cohort is just like, well, why would we do that? And he goes, well, when you have a family, you'll understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, the war gets pushed to the side a little bit. Let's, let's, mm -hmm. you know what, yeah. let's, let's try and get through this moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Politics aside. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so, yeah, it, it's lovely. They end up getting uh, reunited um, uh, or they end, up, they end up getting reunited with their, their people, uh, whereupon, again, they, uh, they all kind of learn that, oh, who is our actual uh, commander? It's this guy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Chill dude. Um, along with a wonderful little moment just for, for fans, because they're all actually uh, watching uh, the Gear yep. and Zabi speech. Uh, the, the, the infamous Sig Zeon speech kind of reanimated and redone for, uh, for this, which is a lovely way of tying things together and letting the fans know this is, this is what's happening. This is where right. we are story-wise. This is our time period that we're, we're addressing. Yeah. And again, to that point, it's one of those things where, you know, if you don't know the history, this is just, okay, you know, the, the, the Zeander giving a speech, things are happening in the world, you know, it's useful information. Um, it doesn't, you, you don't feel lost seeing this, which I appreciate. Right. Right. Um, and then we move on to episode two. Make sure we've got this set up right. Yep. There we go. Um, which I enjoy this episode, but let's be honest, it's basically a let's get, get the team together episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, here's a, everybody on your team. Here's what they do. Mm -hmm. Here's things that are happening. Yeah, uh, and they yeah. kind of don't like you right now, and they think you're going to die in the next forty eight hours. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is kind of the interesting thing of this story as well is that you know in this Shiro is very much the the young buck kind of commander. Um, and he is, and I think that they, they make a point in this is that he's like, I'm going to take point and go out there. Um, and the other character is like, really? Yeah. Like, huh. That's an odd thing for a commander to do first thing out. Um, but that's just kind of what, what Shiro is like. And they interpret that as being foolhardy, which is again, understandable. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I mean, you know. The, the crew chief, those people who are on the ground, the, the mm -hmm. drunk crew master, I don't know who that guy is, but yeah, <laughs> the old yeah. man. Um, you know, they are aware of what combat is like in this mm -hmm. situation. So for, right. yeah, for somebody to be like, I'm just going to take point, be like, dude, you really want to probably like get some experience in this <laughs> before you start, you know, ca writing a check you can't cash. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, there's a comment about the, uh, the 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 crew chief herself, where they're just like, yeah, they drove the she drove the last one away, drove him mm -hmm. insane, yep. wasn't wounded, he just just couldn't handle her anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, she had a mouth like a sailor, but a heart of gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that definitely describes describes Karen. She is a she's a tough one. Yeah, uh, tough cookie. I can't um, wait for their their love part. They they, they do have a love part, right? Probably. I, <laughs> hmm. I got hope. I got hope. Hmm. Maybe her and the Grim Reaper. No. Well, maybe. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> um, love and meccas. Mm. There we go. Um, but yeah, basically, team gets pinned down, um, and we get to see kind of how the different characters react to that. We get to see um, uh, Eldor and Michael um, in their kind of awesome little sonar tank. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, getting to get to get okay to go way deep into the Gundam again. Um, one of the ideas in universe, especially the, the way they had to figure out why would we have melee units on uh, or melee weapons on uh, on Mecha in the future when you just have radar, is that radar doesn't work. Um, there's this thing called Minovsky particles, which are created by the um, the uh, fusion engines that power all these 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 uh, machines and those Minovsky particles jam radar, um, which the military very quickly realized and just started de deploying everywhere. <laughs> like they would right. literally f find ways of distributing Minovsky particles around like all of their secret camps and so forth. Um, right. And the, of course, the problem, is, the problem is as soon as you do that, everyone knows where your secret camps are. So you have to put it everywhere else too. 
Um, so they just, it kind of spread all over the place. And right. so radar is very unreliable. There are patches. Where it's so, so basically radar serves you to go, well, they're north. Right. <laughs> we think. Like World War II radar. You know where yeah. they are distance? You know where they are kind of like direction, but you just really don't know exactly where they are. Yeah, there's a thing over there. <laughs> yeah. Over there. Over there, yes. Yeah. Um, so they have this tank that uses a some version of sonar so they can listen to like ground tremors and so forth because you know, a mecha walking is a very clear kind of a, a sound. Mm -hmm. Uh, clear kind of yeah, rhythm. a multi-ton vehicle. It's clomp, yeah. clomp, clomp. It's kind <laughs> well, of hard to hide it. Yeah. Well, interestingly, in real life in Vietnam, they actually put um, pressure and sound um, boxes along the, the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Oh, to try and and determine movements as you know supply movements as mm -hmm. we're coming down the trail. Yeah. It didn't work, and the reason why mm -hmm. it didn't work was because it it they they did hear things and they did pick up things, and they were elephants. Ah, because mm -hmm. the Ho Chi Minh Trail was along a a a well known elephant just migration route, so they mm -hmm. couldn't tell you know if it was what it was, right? You know, you know who was coming down and stuff, and it's very interesting. Uh, John, you'll learn very on why Eleanor is so well suited to this task. Mm -hmm. Okay, like like there's a reason why he's doing this and why he's good at it. Well, I mean that's yeah, yeah. Um, uh -huh. They hinted that in episode one. I mean, it's, yeah. it's yeah. really clear. Okay, did they? Um, I don't remember that. I thought it, it comes out later on. Well, I mean, he, he, yeah, he sings a lot, but yeah, yeah. John's um, confused. Hmm. <laughs> well, no, the thinking of singing, all I can think of is uh, Genesis Climber and the, the guy who's the singer from from Genesis Climber. Okay. That's, <laughs> so that's all I've all got in my mind. I'm like, wow, okay, this is going to get weird. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, Shiro is unfortunately separated from his unit, and I uh, think happens to him. Now I'm going to have to skip. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> and because he sees on. a girl. Uh, whoops, back to good. Oh, bad. There we go. Yeah, well, even well, further. Well, right. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, sees a girl uh, bathing, shall we say, um, uh, which he is has no problem watching. It's um, a thing. It's a thing. Absolutely. You see stuff in the jungle. You see stuff in the jungle. Changes okay. a man. Right. <laughs> um, stuff but, gets real. Yeah, and then that that that'll come back later. Um, okay, we get a little fan service. In, in fact, indeed, to that point. Um, I have to have right here. Let's see if I can make this work. The uh, Gundam HMS team perfect file. I believe it's perfect. Ooh. File. Oh, wow. Uh, perfect file? Uh, yeah, perfect file. Um, it has all sorts of illustrations wow. from oh, Gundam nice. from HMS team. Very cool. Um, you know, lots of different, different stuff. And. Um, the reason I point this out is because it's really cool. You get you get um, information on all the characters, so forth and so on. They have kind of an episode guide, you know, screenshots from each episode, <laughs> and um, each one has, you know, one or two, uh, you know, sort of featured illustrations, right? So one, one sort of enlarged illustration. Um, in this episode, can you guess what got an enlarged illustration? Him being covered in mud. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. The one that has the least features to it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, no, yeah. The topless girl was, yeah. was heavily pro uh, featured. So if anyone ever tells you that fan service is completely innocent, eh, uh, I don't know. Uh, not, not sure. Um, it sold a lot of those magazines. Sure did. Um, uh, but yes, yeah, so we, we get our, you know, our, our, uh, um, our heroes returning, uh, Shiro returning in his in mold suit, doing just fine. Um, despite all of the the heck he's just been through, because you know war is heck. Um, but he manages to make it back um, after jungle, jungle adventure. So again, one of those things where like um, this episode does do a good job of conveying who Shiro is, who Karen is, um, uh, uh, that um, uh, Sanders. The, the the big guy has this had this string of luck that makes him uh, uh, called the Reaper, the Grim Reaper, the Grim Reaper, because uh, he keeps getting his uh, his teammates killed, which is a bit of a, a worry for him, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. 
you kind of get a sense of who's who's who and who's what. What's going on there? Um, let me move on to episode three. And it also gives me appreciation as he's coming back in in his mm-hmm. unit. Yeah. It's he's not really doing anything. It's like autopilot. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah. coming. It's just on the way home. Yep. <laughs> but he just sort of takes He's a nap. Walking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, man, I could have used that yesterday. Mm-hmm. Coming home, food poisoning. <laughs> Car just gave me home, please. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, it is a cool little like world detail. Is you know, of course you don't have to literally like drive the legs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of right. course, there's like a button that says move forward. A little bicycle pedal and chains. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Keep pedaling, damn it. Um, yeah, then we move on to episode three, um, which is where she, uh, the uh, uh, the girl from before kind of uh, shows back up again. We get more on that. Um, they're sent out on a mission in the jungle uh, to take out a, uh, a, a supply route the Xeon have captured. Try to sort of destroy it or get it back from them, um, and of course things don't go exactly to plan. Um, because what could happen? But uh, girl shows up again with uh, with help, with friends. Friends, exactly. Why would you pop the hood on your Gundam <laughs> just because yeah. somebody shows up outside? Why not activate mm-hmm. the, like you know basically the bullhorn and be like, "What do you want? Get off! Let's go! <laughs> Beat it! I'm, all, I'm doing stuff." I- there should be a button that goes electricity. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know why because Gundams don't have locks. Yeah. Apparently, so you can just pop it open and get right in. So <laughs> the the anti personnel function of Gundams apparently is yeah, very really low. <laughs> you can't, another Gundam can't get into it, but a person just walks right, just, gets right on it. Exactly. No, no problem at all. Um, uh, so. Uh, yeah, so th- this is your little episode in The Value of Friendship, um, <laughs> where Shiro goes along with them to this village, realizes that Kiki is like the daughter of the local. Um, and it's, yeah, well, it's interesting because he, he's sort of a bandit chief, a like local yeah. sort of guerrilla leader, but he's also clearly a, a head Yakuza. Yeah. Like just right straight up. It's, it's kind of that, that, that vibe all yeah. around. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's basically Shiro is trying to negotiate with them to, to make that work. What did y'all think of this episode? I I I like the way that they're engaging with the locals, even though they're not the like villagers themselves. They're mm-hmm. they're sort of the self appointed. We could free this village, and then that'll be great for us. Mm-hmm. Um, I I I, hmm, I I liked where they were going to like try and engage that mm. i kind of his negotiation style and <laughs> like the fact that he could negotiate considering they could kick his ass any minute now because he's defenseless yeah. absolutely um I, it, it kind of left me sort of that 50 50 i'm like it's okay yeah. it's not great it's, mm. it's interesting but mm. mm-hmm. i like kiki she's cool mm-hmm. steve any thoughts i you know this was um the first time I watched it, this was actually the the episode that I almost said, ah, "Okay, whatever," and walk away mm-hmm. based on this scene. Um, to to John's point, it's it's one of those things where it's this kind of like we're talking, we're talking, we're talking, we're kind of going nowhere, we're going mm-hmm. nowhere, we're going nowhere, and you know, it's 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 clear and ob- it should have been obvious to Shiro that they have things that they want. If he yeah. wants the things that he wants, then he has to give that up. And he finally figures mm-hmm. it out after all this banter and stuff. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, the fact that the chief is <clears throat> kind of obli- – he's not oblivious to the fact that there's the, the Zeons are everywhere. Mm-hmm. And there's not much he can do about it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it just seems like the, neither neither one of them is trying to grasp the opportunity, which both mm-hmm. of them can have. Yeah. But, but what saved it was that once that did happen mm-hmm. was that we got an awesome – battle scene mm. yes mm-hmm. yeah. um and i will say i did also find it refreshing that you know shiro is not portrayed as a kind of self-insert mc where he is you know a great leader and a great pilot and a great master negotiator and all right, that yes he just sucks at this he just does not right. know how to do it <laughs> which does very effectively come across yes absolutely. <laughs> yeah um and another thing i actually do appreciate whoa um, is that uh, uh, um, turns out 
uh, soldiers in combat take a long journey pictures. Um, <laughs> but uh, memories when, of home. Hey, yeah, yeah, that's definitely memories of home. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad that filter is on because I was just about to say something. <laughs> anyway, um, one thing I appreciate is that uh, basically Shiro says, "Okay, I'm going to go in at to, to basically do a um, uh, a feint." At this time, start your barrage, and then I will kind of do what needs to be done at, you know, as soon as I can. And when that time comes, because without them knowing that he's been captured, they're like, okay, let's start you know, firing weapons. Um, he makes it back to help them. And one of the things I really appreciate is that um, they're not doing terribly. Like, right. They don't smash cut back to, oh my gosh, we're all almost dead. You know, Shiro better show up. It's like, no, we plan for an hour. It's half an hour in, 45 minutes in. I hope he gets here soon because we're going to have to leave. Yeah. Um, you know, they didn't ratchet up the, the, the drama or the tension unnecessarily. Like, Thank you. Um, but um, yeah, there's, which, you don't by have the, the sense. Way, a 45 minute or an hour long firefight, <laughs> yeah. they do not have nearly enough supplies. <laughs> It just feels like there should have been the the day packs that they put on the the suits as they're going out should have had a crap ton more ammunition for an hour long fight. Well, you're right. Gun, uh, um, Gundam is known for its for, for being you know, rigorous and yeah. it's in, in its military. Uh, uh, yeah, because I mean, wow, that's a lot of firepower that you're going to be dumping <laughs> out there. Yeah, it, it is an anime series. Yeah, I know. It's anime. I know. I know. But I do think these things, when I see that, you know, it's got the bazooka looking thing, be like, mm, how many shots can you get out of that before you start to overheat the barrel? Never mind. Don't no, just back away. <laughs> yeah. Back away from it. <laughs> 10 million rounds later. Is this thing supposed to be melting? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, moving on. Um, but yes, we do get a really awesome fight scene. Um, Partly because it's not just Mecha, it's also the kind of gorillas on the ground. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm seeing the contrast between all them, all the stuff they're doing. Um, it really helps to make the story feel again, kind of grounded, that there's lots of things going on in one environment, um, as opposed to just giant robots, you know, whacking at each other. It's nice. Um, let's see here, what else we get? Um, yeah, man, this underwater fight. Like, I really enjoyed that. Um, like the whole thing between the uh, the uh, Shiro and the underwater unit and trying to uh, uh, you know take each other out because again there's this there's this sense of dueling, um, yeah. th th this sense of and, and the sense that it's not simply you know I'm going to take you out I'm I'm trying to kill you it's how do I um, deal with this situation how do I drive you off if I can. Um, which again is a kind of a very military thing. It's like, yeah, I'll kill you if I can, but really, my, my that, that my goal is not to kill you. My goal is to secure this this you know, this area or whatever. Neutralize the threat right. any way possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. That's kind of cool. Um, um, yeah, and that's the episode basically. They managed they managed to to get the count. So, any other thoughts on this? I'll be curious to see how it goes. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm enjoying what I'm seeing so far. So yeah. It, oh, it goes. <laughs> it goes. <laughs> it goes. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that that you get out of this series that you don't get out of a lot of the, the other mm -hmm. series is the attempt to show what it means to be inside the military. Mm -hmm. And this is not, a, you know, when you had the original Gundam series. Um, you know, it was a bunch of refugees and this kid who's on the spectrum who's piling the thing. Yeah. You have Bright, who is really a junior commander. Yeah. You know, you know riding and around most the of the crew are refugees. Right. So it's not like, you know, this. these are all, you know, seasoned warriors. Mm -hmm. War in the Pocket, the only real, you don't really have actually that many soldiers in, right. in War in the Pocket. So it's not, so this is like a, a refreshing series in that, you know, you, you're talking about people who went through training mm -hmm. these are actual bases these are people who have actual ranks these are things that they actually have to do mm -hmm. take into consideration so forth and so on and the end credit scenes 
is really great because what it yeah. is is that it's one person's POV with a camera, and you see camp life going on around them, around around Shiro, mm -hmm. and they you see you know various things going on, you know, like you know, like you can't show it here, but you know, basically a pinup yeah. is is take is put in front of you, mm -hmm. but that's the whole point. It's like it's just kind of showing how you know people get mischievous. This is their downtime. This is what mm -hmm. they do, and you notice what one of the things that he's doing is that he's signing off on something yeah it could be a requisition order it could be a order for something else it's something that requires his signature that because he is the the officer in charge oh you know, whatever right yeah right there so you know this is what they're trying to convey here is is that this is military life this isn't mm -hmm. just amaro ray on yeah white base you know having a hissy fit this is mm -hmm. you know a thing this is what these people are supposed to be doing mm -hmm. yeah when shiro says that's an order people do it <laughs> right right there's, there's no that. there's no bright slap mm -hmm. you know yeah. yeah yeah um also um easy to look at like i i love the yeah. you know, just the overall visual style um uh character designs by the great Kachiro kawamoto who in three years later would uh character design on a little show called kaba bebop Ooh, um, yep. So uh, definitely, definitely helps there. Um, just uh, a, a really, uh, you know, it's quality. I think quality is kind of the watchword to make the mess team in general. Where even if it's not a, even if it's not your cup of tea, you can recognize, oh, they they were they were they were, they, were, they were thoughtful on this show yeah. a lot. Which is very cool. Um, so yeah, as Steve says, it definitely goes places. But this is you know, these first couple episodes are very much okay. Let's get a sense right. of the characters and the world and so forth. All right. Um, John, do you have any questions at this point about like what might be um, at this point in the show? Where, where's your mind at? Where, where, where do you, where are you like? I'm, I'm I wonder where this is going to go. Well, I mean, what once you you explain that they're Federation from some mm -hmm. you know somewhere in orbit, some some mm -hmm. colony in orbit. Um, the only thought that had really come to my mind is like, okay, these guys pulled the jungle mission. I'm going mm -hmm. to assume there's probably like. A desert mission there's probably like something that's you know oceania somewhere in the pacific kind of mission and like mm -hmm. this we're just looking at this one mm -hmm. like drop unit the 08 mm -hmm. they're down doing their thing mm -hmm. like a lot of these other units are in a lot yeah. of other places I'm like mm -hmm. okay so this is yeah. this is like i'd heard it for war in the pocket this is just mm -hmm. this little chunk of a much grander thing going on so yep. i'm mm -hmm. curious to see what other parts of the grander scheme come in on this or mm -hmm. don't so i'm just I'll, i'm waiting to see how that goes how that okay. develops so cool. no questions cool. as of yet i, I got um, I, I lay of the land understanding the characters okay what do you think will happen like what, what do you think is the story of this of this ova where do you think it's gonna go i have a feeling it's gonna go sort of slightly vietnamish okay um that it's going to be there's going to be a lot of technology. There's going to be a lot of ammunition and a lot of fighting thrown at everything, and it's going to have an inconclusive end. Okay. So it's not like the the Zaku is going to sweep in and wipe them out. They're not going to sweep mm. in and wipe the Zaku's out. That it's just going to be this constant cat and mouse game through the jungle, okay. mm -hmm. and that the, it's great that Kiki and her her crew will will lend some assistance. Who knows whether mm. you know it's going to be we'll trade you this you know military supply item and you give us intel or whatever so they'll act as sort of a, like ad hoc scouts don't know but just i it feels like this is going to be oh uh, look at the pointlessness of this mm. you know they're 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 struggling in this harsh environment and for what mm. but mm. i don't know i don't know okay cool cool all right we'll see how that goes let's we'll see where we, where we go with that Probably only be like rainbows and lollipops. And everything. Everything's beautiful at the very end. Totoro shows up. Pretty yeah. much. Yes. Like, oh, it's so sweet. Everybody gets married. They have kids. They live in the jungle. It's beautiful. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, that's great. Either that or it'll be 86. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> I was thinking there was a lot of a lot of similarities to 86 in this. Yeah. Well, so yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. Cool. All right. Well, we're gonna take a quick break. Come back in a little bit, talk about some more recent anime news. Uh, see you then once I make that happen.